Okay, so thank you guys all for being here. Uh, I guess I don't really need to introduce myself. Maybe I will for those of you who are listening on the recording. My name is Corey Woodley. I'm chairwoman of Pullman Police Advisory, and we are having our August 13th meeting today. And first on our list is meeting minutes approval for the July 9th meeting. Did anyone get a chance to look at those and have any comments on those meeting minutes before they're approved? I looked through them and did not see anything that needed to be changed. So if I hear a motion, we can get these. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Seconded. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, great. The easiest thing of the day is done. <laughs> all right, so at our last meeting, uh, for those of you who are here, we were talking about what well, we were nominating a new vice chair and we actually had a tie uh, and we decided we would have a subcommittee meeting a subcommittee put together to discuss our bylaws for the committee and to discuss you know what would the pr proper procedures be to have a tie and if there's a way that we could create a system to have co co-chairs in a sense uh, and then I started looking back at old minutes and I realized that I had been here three years. I thought I had been two years, but as of next <laughs> month, uh, I was nominated on my birthday three years ago. And so it's every three years that we do elections for this committee. So coming up next month would be that three year mark. So we would have to both do nominations, uh, an appointment of both the chairperson and vice chairperson of next month. So at this point, I think we'll have Darby send out a message to the committee letting everybody know about this so that people can either reiterate their nominations or uh, choose to maybe be interested in the chair or vice chair position at that point. Uh, we're still going to be meeting for our uh, subcommittee to look at the bylaws. Eric is meeting with us as well. and. We will hopefully get some better structure in there to deal with situations where we have multiple nominations and maybe ties. So we'll let you guys know. Hopefully we can vote something at our next meeting to get those updated. Uh, we're also going to be going through the rest of the bylaws. They're, they aren't that long. Um, for those of you who have read them, they're like four pages. They're on our website. They're pretty easy to get through. But if you guys have any suggestions uh, and you aren't able to sit on the committee or join us for that meeting, please just email them to me and I'll rep represent your suggestions. Uh, do you have any questions or concerns about that? Gary, any suggestions? Um, I'll just, um, let me just read a couple of the relevant sections here and then I'll have Darby also include this in her email. But for nominations, it says nominations for member of members for the position of chair and or vice chair can be made in writing prior to the scheduled September meeting mm -hmm. or can be submitted verbally or in writing at the September meeting. Members can be nominated to be on the ballot for either the chair or vice chair position or both positions as they desire. For purposes of committee officer elections only, every committee member who is physically present at the election meeting will be eligible to vote regardless of whether they are a primary or alternate representative of their constituency. Absentee, absentee voting by members unable to attend the meeting will not be allowed. Do you have any questions about any of that? Okay. And the full, those are, those are available to you guys online. So if you want to go read them, I wanted to print them today. I didn't get to print them because my printer decided to, that it was done. <laughs> so that will have a funeral later this week. Um, hopefully get that replaced. Anyway. I appreciate you guys all being here, let, uh, being patient with this process. I should have been ahead of the game last meeting and I should have said, hey, let's hold off on this chair, uh, vice chair nomination because we do have our, our you know, chair and vice chair nomination coming up. So it was some good drama, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good for us. Keeps us, keeps us on the edge of our seat, right? It's good so. for the YouTube viewers. Yes, great. We don't want to bore everybody. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, next thing that we have to talk about is the Lentil Festival. Every year we go to the Lentil Festival and we talk to people about what, 
the police advisory committee is. It's a good opportunity to just generally network with the community. We've brought our boards. We have police boards uh, that just give general information about the full police department. The P police advisory committee takes over the station on the Friday every year. And then the police department and Gary uh, has a couple of officers and sometimes we've helped on that if officers aren't available. They uh, represent the police department there on Saturday and that's still in the plan. Yeah, except that I would say um, any um, committee member that wants to assist at the booth on Saturday, uh, they're certainly welcome to be there when we have officers there as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so if any of you want to be a part of this and are not available on Friday, that's great. You can just let me know and we'll make sure that you guys can participate in that. Uh, so when, when does it open? Uh, five or four? So it's set up from three to four on Friday. Right. And then people shouldn't really start coming. It says four, but I, okay. people typically don't start coming in until like five, I think. Yeah. From so did they assign you a specific one hour time slot? Because uh, setup, setup is open from noon to four. Uh, oh, you know, I think Darby might have printed this from last year because I think we had the same mistake on here last so year. So there should be a sheet there that um, with the Lena Festival information on it. Okay, thing. yeah, this one. It says, yeah, it says 12 to yeah. 4. So, but, um, but so you might want to coordinate that with whoever's going to help set up and we can have an officer help with the setup if yeah. we know what time. Definitely. And my husband and I will both meet at the police department beforehand to help set up. Another person would be great the last three years. I think it's been my husband and I doing the setup, but we would uh, like any of your guys' help. That would be much appreciated. I'm going to pass what this. What Friday are we talking about? Is this coming 18th. Friday? or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. the 17th. Yep. Yeah, the Lentil Festival is coming up quickly this year. It's <laughs> I, think, I think other years we've brought it up like a month before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully uh, the smoke isn't going to be so bad. I've read from forecasts that it should be better this weekend, but um, <laughs> we may have to take precautions, wear masks. If it's really bad down there and you have health issues, please do not put your health at risk to be there. I'll make sure that I am there too. So I'm going to pass this around and it has sign up so that you guys can sign up to help. It does go, a teardown doesn't happen from until, you know, 10, 11 p.m., but I should say that on Friday night, teardown, mostly what we do is we take, especially all the papers, we take them, we put them in boxes and put them underneath the table. And that way they're ready for the morning people that are gonna be setting up for the next day. So it's not, it's not like as physically intensive as doing the setup, I would say. Yeah, Chief Jenkins, do you have anything else to add to that? No, was there anything special that you, um, the committee wants to do on Friday night other than just be present and we'll have, of course, uh, a setup for you with different brochures on, mm -hmm. on various topics? I don't know if there's anything in particular you wanted to focus on this year. I'm open to suggestions. I think that that's a great question. Do we have suckers this year? Or are we? I know this sounds like irrelevant, but it's really important for the um, kids. I don't know <laughs> if we have suckers, but we do have some new items that we got okay. uh, for handouts. So we'll have those ready. Okay. Uh, and we also typically do the child ID kits there too. Uh, we if, said, we, if we have enough if we, manpower. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we don't. We don't. Yeah, we just hand them out. Yes, right, right. And typically, I always lure the kids in with a sucker, and then the parents come <laughs> up and I say, boring. hey. <laughs> 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 it's harmless. It's to the police booth. <laughs> anyway, then the parents come in, and then you can talk to them about the child ID kids, the value. Does everyone here knows, know what those are? Cause I, I mean, I didn't know what they were until I was here, you know, with the police department, which is why my mom did a bad job. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys have any questions about those, there are directions on the back of those. So if you guys are getting questions about them, you can just take one apart. It has like a little, you know, uh, ink pad in there. It tells you to put a little photo in there and keep the photo updated every year just so uh, if the child is ever lost, they have that to turn over to the police department to help relocate that child. So just 
Let me know if you have any questions on that. Another thing that we've given away a lot of the last year was a big hit that hadn't been hit other years were the coloring books. <laughs> so, and I thought maybe next year when we do the art walk that we should focus on giving away more of those coloring books and uh, maybe even set up some sort of art related, um, police related thing so that uh, we fit in a little better last year at the art walk we were, I think we were the only booth that wasn't really art oriented but <laughs> it was still fun to be there so we'll try and tie that in a little bit better this year anyway I'm done chatting what do you guys think any suggestions <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I was wondering some years we've had like little business cards that I think were police advisory committee was yes separate ones, and I but. think Darby still has those printed I, from what my knowledge is okay. in those boxes in the back okay. we still have some available okay. Is there anybody that doesn't have a shirt that needs a shirt, police advisory committee shirt? I think uh, I sent to Derby the size, but she told me. Okay, to yeah, that. yours I think is on. There's a couple. <coughs> of them. And we can add that in the reminder email too to see if there's anyone that wasn't here that. Because we do have some shirts, but uh, I think they're like uh, I'll check the sizes. But if somebody needs one, I can look and see if one will fit. And then just to throw a couple of things. So in the past, I think we've had like a board that went up. Or yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And that will be probably recycled from last year, right? Yeah. And sometimes we've added new pictures. Like last year, I sent Darby some of our updated photos, which we should probably update again <laughs> because we've had yeah. a little bit of a change. So yeah. I should, you know, we should set that up maybe in the next few months to get those photos updated again. Uh, and I don't even think we ever even updated on them, updated them on the brochure. But if we have a volunteer to look at the brochure, that'd be great. Uh, so if the setup window is 12 to 4, what time do you want people there to help? So we've always done it the later, 3 to 4. <laughs> and that's just because, you know, they say that you shouldn't, well, hmm. It doesn't take long to set up. Yeah, I was going to say something also else. also it blows down a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's a good warning. So be prepared to get whacked in the All head. All right, so help you set up at three? Yeah, so okay. three to four. Got it. Uh, if that changes, we'll send out an email. But we've, if we go down there too early, there's all these other people setting up too, and it's, I don't know. We have this big space all the way at the end, <coughs> the same space that we had last year. We pretty much always get right across from their beer gardens for good reason, right? So... Uh, of course, last year we had the um, police ATV or UTV there. Yeah, I got to ride down in that. Yeah. It was great. Uh, but so stuff like that or a police car is always an attraction if you got them available. So I was gonna say we're gonna <laughs> have any. Sure. Yeah, equipment. yeah, we will, and that's the plus of having the spot that we have because we can get a car right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the driveway. Yep, and it's great for setup if we're doing it on the later, and it doesn't take long. I don't think it takes us, once we're down there, more than 20 minutes to get things set up. Yeah. Are we going to have the drone or anything out? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always very interested. <laughs> That's cheap. Well, you know, we just had our uh, second annual Aerial Adventure Day oh, where last, were you? this last Saturday. <laughs> So I think that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, right now we only have one of our pilots is uh, left to move to Alaska, so that left us with two. Um, and I don't know that either one of them are available at that time. So. All right. Well, if you guys end up having any other ideas for things we could do or should do at that Lentil Festival, that'd be great. I just think it's great to be there and say what the committee is. A lot of people yeah. uh, don't know what. Obviously, we're getting some outreach because more people are starting to know about us, but it doesn't make more people necessarily come to our meetings, but people are still aware that we're a resource and that we're here, uh, and that does help. And I have gotten follow-up emails several times just saying, hey, we saw you there, and ask questions, and that's pretty much all we really want to do is get people to know that we're here, we're available as a resource. Yeah. In the past, we've signed people up on, like, call notification list serves and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to if we're still doing that? You know, that's a good one to, to push, actually, because 
when we, we first pushed that out, we really marketed it, and then it, we haven't really done that in a while, and that's a very valuable tool. So let me uh, make sure that we have those brochures available, and then that, that would be something that would be really be good to emphasize, I think, this year, particularly with the fires going on. Great, thanks for the suggestion. Wow, that was easy and fast. So, Chief Jenkins, can we have our police department update? <coughs> All right. So we hired a record specialist that filled our last record specialist vacancy. She started August 1st, Rachel Rice is her name. So she's in training now and she'll be in training for a few months. We hired two police officers, uh, and really they're going to replace two officers that recently left. One moved to uh, Florida, the other one moved to Alaska. And so we hired uh, Humphrey Holden and Love, he spells his name L-U-V, and it's pronounced Love, St. Andre. And uh, they just started working uh, here in the past couple of weeks. and. They were originally scheduled for a Spokane Academy August 7th, and that, that academy was canceled, and we were waiting for a date to get them into an academy. So the, um, the training commission added some more academy classes, and they got them into an academy that starts August 21st. So they'll be in the academy from August 21st to January 9th. So that was really good news um, because uh, at the time that they canceled the Spokane Academy, it looked like the next available one wasn't going to be available till uh, about October or November. Uh, so that would have put us, you know, really uh, a lot farther behind. So uh, they'll be out of the academy by January 9th. Um, so now we're at a point where. Um, uh, they brought us up to 28, and we actually are authorized 33, so we need to hire five. So we have a continuous police officer recruitment. We held interviews for the first round of uh, applicants July 11th and 12th, and, and Corey uh, sat in on those interviews as a panelist. And um, we're currently conducting backgrounds on two applicants from that, that pool. So we're hoping to do another round of interviews around mid-September. Uh, I want to wait till we have another local testing. We go through National Testing Network, and they have testing all around the country, but it makes it difficult for local applicants to get through the process if we don't have some local testing. So we're working with National Testing Network to get some local testing done, and then um, hopefully have interviews uh, in about a month. Um, we also, I think I reported last time that uh, Emily Johns, one of our code enforcement officers, moved to Coeur d'Alene. So we are currently doing a recruitment uh, for her position, and uh, we have interviews scheduled September 4th. Uh, that recruitment goes through the end of August. Um, one of our, uh, Sam Sorma is a police sergeant who retired in December. And uh, he hadn't quite decided exactly what he was going to do in retirement. So he's uh, decided that uh, he is going to apply for code enforcement officer and try to come back as code enforcement. So because of his experience, we've been able to make a, what's called a provisional hire. So we're doing a provisional hire for him as a code enforcement officer to fill that vacancy until the um, hiring is done. And so at least he'll be in that position until we hire someone, and it could be him that we hire. So, mm -hmm. um, so that will, that's a big help to us to get that, that position filled. Uh, in, on July 18th, we held our annual liquor license holder training. We had about 70 uh, people attend that, and that's in conjunction with the Liquor and Cannabis Board. Uh, the high school uh, let us use their theater as the venue. Uh, July 19th was the annual library reading, and so uh, my officers, uh, Heidi Lamley and Chris Engel and I uh, went to the library and, and read to kids that morning. On the, uh, the week of July 23rd, there were, we had some international students from WSU come and visit the police department, as well as some Okinawa uh, students. Every year, uh, junior high school age Okinawa students 
uh, have go through a program at Washington State University and then they bring them over to City Hall and have them tour uh, the police and fire departments. The international students, I hope this is going to be an annual thing of uh, from some international students of bringing them here and uh, not only give them a tour of the police facility but also talk to them about law enforcement in the United States and what uh, to expect from contacts from police, uh, what it means when you see a red or blue light behind you, um, because there have been a number of incidents across the country where someone's here from another country and they don't understand what that means um, and has caused some problems. And so, uh, so we want to educate them and make sure it doesn't um, result in any kind of a bad situation. Um, the council meeting July 24th every year the fire chief and I uh, give a report to city council from um, what occurred during the 4th of July period and we look at the time period from June 28th to July 6th and this year we were uh, down quite a bit on firework related calls during that time period the previous year we had about 23 fireworks related calls and this year we only had 13 uh, and no significant events this year um, coach leach has invited us every year to talk to his football team at their very first team meeting uh, just before they head down to lewiston for their summer football camp so uh, uh, officer shane emerson and i met with the team on august 2nd and essentially we just talk about um, expectations in the community and um, uh, that there's no double standard in Pullman and that Shane's available as a resource to them to help keep them out of trouble um, and, and that that's our goal is to use education to try to keep people out of trouble and so they <clears throat> they're in the newspaper for what they do on the field instead of off the field <coughs> excuse me our um, WITCOM the regional dispatch center uh, we're in the process of hiring a new director and so um, I'm on the uh, executive board for that and so we uh, interviewed the top three applicants on August 7th and uh, that process is still in progress uh, August 7th was national night out as you know and thank you to those of you that were able to make it out to one of the, the sites um, I had a council meeting that night, but I was able to make it to all but Sunnyside Hill. And uh, there is really good attendance at the, the hills that I went and visited. I saw Eric on Military Hill, and um, Nathan was on um, Pioneer Hill, and Barbara Ham <coughs> Hammond was on um, College Hill. Right. And then uh, you were Stephanie on, there were a number of people on Su uh, Sunnyside Hill, yes. right? Yeah, it was, yeah, Tark, Tark, Stephanie, and I. So, the, um, you know, that was actually uh, started by the Pullman 2040 organization, and um, they got the chamber and the police department to help co-host that. So I think that's going to be an annual event now, uh, and we'll put a little bit more work into that ourselves as the police department. It's been an issue in the past just because it takes some time to organize those things and to staff them, uh, and we haven't really been in a good position to do that but now that it's going and uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time in the organization part we can help support that and then this past Saturday was our aerial second annual aerial adventure day um, we had uh, Spokane um, S, it's a drone racing club come down and um, they had some drone races at uh, Krugel Park the look it's called the Palouse RC Flyers uh, it's a radio controlled club and they came down and flew some of their planes uh, our officers did some demos with our drones and we set up a little obstacle course and had some little toy drones for kids to fly uh, and we invited anybody with their own drone to come down and fly it through our obstacle course um, so that's been a fun event and we had uh, it cooled down on Saturday for us so it wasn't extremely hot and it didn't rain like last year so it was a good time and there was an article on the front page of the Daily News this morning about it as well. Uh, coming up, uh, we'll be having our annual meeting with Pullman School District administrators and principals. That's going to be on August 20th. And that's just a touch base and 
uh, go over our safety protocols for active shooters and those types of uh, potential events. And then code enforcement officer interviews are going to be September 4th. And Corey, you're going to be sitting on those, correct? Mm -hmm. Some follow-up from last meeting. Um, the traffic, uh, there was a question about when we're going to have the traffic signal at Grand and Center. So I contacted Public Works, and apparently that's still about two years out. Um, they're, they're, have, they're working on property issues on the east side of Grand um, because they are going to have to widen that intersection and some of the property doesn't belong to the city. And then they have to work with some grant funding timelines and also with uh, Department of Transportation, so that's, that's part of the state highway. So a lot of things to coordinate, so they think they're still about two years out. And um, I don't know if any of you have seen police uh, lip sync challenge that's going on across the nation. It's, <laughs> if you Google it, you'll find a lot. So we decided instead of waiting to get challenged, uh, we went ahead and we put one together and we just wrapped it up this weekend. And so uh, we'll probably be putting that out. I'm going to have to figure out the right timing, but it might be out by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. And it's, and uh, we wanted to make ours a lot different than, than the others. Uh, and what we did, we did a couple of things. One was we involved a lot of the community. Uh, uh, businesses that are real active in the community. We went and did some things with their employees. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is we're, we're dedicating the, the um, video to the life of Tyler Helensky and uh, promoting the Helensky's Hope Foundation. And so we have some uh, information in the video about that and some videos of Tyler. <coughs> I've been corresponding with Tyler's mother and uh, to make sure that she gave her approval and she's She's seen our, our uh, draft video, and she, she was really happy with it and was very excited. So, um, so that was a good thing. So we're hoping to make it something bigger than just you know uh, another police lip sync challenge and, and promote some um, suicide uh, prevention awareness, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's all I've got. Did you participate in the production? I did, <laughs> yes. And they told me on these videos, bad dancing is good, so I must have done really good. So. <laughs> Thank goodness it's lip syncing and you don't have to hear my voice. <laughs> Could we ask you to do a demo right now? <laughs> yeah, get the camera the video. <laughs> that would just ruin the whole surprise. <laughs> you got to give like a teaser, though, like a trailer. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Jenkins. Any questions? Okay. All right. We're moving on today. We're going to go on to our constituencies poll. And Richard, will you start us? Uh, very good turnout on Pioneer Hill for the uh, night out. There was, as you said, there was a follow-up on the <coughs> the uh, drone activity. There was a nice write-up in, I think it was this morning's paper. I can't remember. There was no follow-up on the night out. I think there should have been. And I was surprised at the size of the turnout at Pioneer Hill. I got there early and there was hardly anybody there. And by the time I left, I don't know, there was, I think, maybe close to 100. Yeah. A lot of family groups. So yeah, and we issued, a, we issued a press release. And a lot of times the, you know, the, the local press will pick up on that and, and come and do a story. But yeah, no, you're I right. Didn't they didn't, maybe they missed it. I no, know. I don't think they did. <clears throat> Uh, there was a big article about Moscow's national night out. <laughs> so we'll have to make sure next year we wrangle in a couple of reporters over there. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream was very popular. Yeah, the ice cream sandwiches at Sunnyside were great. <laughs> were they grabbers? No, um, I think they were just regular ice cream. Yeah, the grabbers, that would be, yeah. I would not be at the council meeting. I would stay at the, what the <laughs> Like, wait, you had grabbers on your hill? What? There's like a hill hierarchy. It's like, next year I'm going to Pioneer Hills. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, um, no comments. Thanks for having me back. I've been gone for the summer. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, welcome back, Angela. Thank you. No comments. Okay. Uh, 
Maddie Sutherland College Hill. Uh, as you know, the Shenanigans are back up in full swing, swing with the <laughs> students back in town. So uh, I'll see what I can do to wrangle them under control. Okay. For the most part. But no spicy details yet? No. No, not yet. Uh, m most of it's pretty standard, as I'm sure <laughs> you all know. But uh, uh, no, no huge complaints from anyone I've heard of. So that's good. Good. Give it time. Uh, Amy Newsbaum from Military Hill. I've got nothing. Okay. Adam Williams, Sunnyside Hill alternate. Uh, nothing. I was able to volunteer for the campus move in on Saturday, which is the third year I've done that. And that's a lot of. Actually, I don't know if it's fun. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> the dorm I was at didn't have an elevator. Oh. Was five, both buildings were five stories, so that was a lot of work. But it, it, it's rewarding. Uh, for those of you who are watching, <laughs> it's rewarding. <laughs> do that next year. So do you, it's starting to get busy. Do you just um, show up, then they assign the volunteers at different places, or do you just go? Uh, uh, ahead of time, you get assigned okay. uh, your location. And then, so you'll know where to go and what shift. But it's, I think it's a good thing for the community to be part of. Um, students make up most of the volunteers and staff. But How long are the shifts? Anyway, you can do like two hours to all day from 7.30 to 6 wow. if you wanted to. But mine was two shifts. Okay. <laughs> wow. Otherwise, nothing to report. Thank you. Okay. I'm Eric Tetzloff, business. Um, I just want to say that the, I thought the Military Hill night out was, went really well, so. Um, there are a lot of families there, um, and I uh, got to know a few neighbors while I was there too, so <laughs> yeah. that was nice. Um, yeah, I just, uh, um, Ed hosted it, and I th he, was there, he and his family did a really good job of that too, so. Oh, very um, cool. So. Thank you. Uh, Corey Woodley, uh, also business community, but I live on Sunnyside Hill, so I did get to go to the Sunnyside event and that was great. Uh, it was nice to socialize with Tarek more and get to know a few other people. Uh, a few other officers showed up so that was nice. Aiden got her first, what, no, second picture with an officer, you know, <laughs> and then I got a lot of comments on Facebook afterwards. That's my daughter, by the way, saying she's already getting picked up by a lot of police. She can see the problem. <laughs> I should keep a closer eye on her. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Other than that, no more updates. <laughs> uh, for me, no update. Uh, I just, I you know, I want to say something is related to uh, a Muslim community here in Pullman. They have celebrated the Eid al-Adha in the twenty uh, first. So that's the the Muslim has to uh, uh, okay original celebration. Eid al-Fatr after fasting Ramadan, and also they have uh, Eid al-Adha when they slot uh, this uh, big uh, ram. Mm -hmm. So they, we're going to celebrate all the Muslim community here in Bowman in, in 21st. Of so. this month? Yes. Okay. And do you have a location? Uh, I think we're going to pray at the, uh, in the uh, Pullman Islamic Center. And after that, uh, maybe they go to the WSU to if they need to prostitute to slot any lamp there. So mm -hmm. we contract with the WSU for doing this practice there. Mm -hmm. And uh, other people maybe gathering to any bar to celebrate at that day. OK, great. Thank you. Mm. Any questions? From anybody for anyone? Could you send that to Darby so she could send it out to the Can list? Yeah. So like we could have it in an email. Okay. Do you have Darby's email? I yes. Okay. Yeah, Can so you send, yeah. send it to me and then I'll get it out quicker because she's not going to be back till a week yeah, from today. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the Islamic Center has an open house every year at R Ramadan. Is that yes, right? Yes, at Ramadan. Yes. Do you have a date for that? The open house? Yeah. It just happened. Uh, yeah, it's the, I think it's the middle of Ramadan, but Ramadan is the only month. We can't decide which time from the next Ramadan. So 
even this uh, uh, Eid al-Adha, just uh, Sunday we try to a specific day to, to determine what is the date because they start in the moon month is the the name is the Duhaja. Arabic uh, Islamic have they we use the moon month based on see the side of the moon okay. so in Sunday we see this start the month so Eid al-Adha in the 10th of this uh, 12th in this month so we now determine the next uh, Tuesday will be the uh, the Eid al Adha. So in in open house, I think we uh, we determine the time, the beginning of each Ramadan, and we try to spread a lot of the information about this open house. But I think is uh, we have also Arabic school start to begin at the uh, September. I will let you know with day to to visit the Arabic school. We try to rent now uh, Franklin School. Mm -hmm. So it is good to have uh, more information about uh, other uh, uh, community living in Pullman from Arabic and any Arab another culture. So for that reason, I bring this information to you to note. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any public comment? <laughs> Your husband's usually here. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? Your husband's usually here. Yeah, I know. You know, he's off with our daughter right now, trying to keep her away from the cops. So <laughs> here is no, not a good missed. place for that. Which, <laughs> Chief Jenkins here, so. Do we have a like a speaker list for the next couple of months? Oh, or do we so we all? created one. Uh, we don't have any. I I don't think we've contacted anybody recently. Uh, we can. You, do you want me to see? Uh, Jeff Guillory was canceled because of um, a health issue, but I can check to see if he's available to come back, unless there's another topic you want to do before that one. He was going to do cultural awareness training, uh, talk about that and how he does that with law enforcement. Uh, yeah, we can see, but I don't want to pressure him in case. Yeah, so <laughs> we should have a backup if that one doesn't work. Um, so the other ones that I have on the list here, I have uh, College Hill Association. Um, our D.A.R.E. program and school resource officer duties, our college hill officer duties, uh, Jeff Guyette from Community Action Center, uh, talking about drugs in the region and the Whitman County coroner. I, I mean, I think that I would like to start with the Community Action Center, but does, is there any other opinions on any of those that you'd like to hear from first? I think October Cybersecurity Awareness okay. Month. So, if we have anyone that deals with cybersecurity, that's always a good topic. Yeah. Because there's, it's always changing, and <clears throat> I don't think we've done cybersecurity here. Easily. That's probably one that the public would be interested in as well. And I don't think it's one we've had in the past. I mean, maybe you you yeah. would know, but because that I can think of, okay. probably ties into that is the whole. Um, um, Identity theft thing, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, but. So you want me to arrange that for next meeting? I, mean, I can't think of a good. That's speaker, the October though. one. I mean, I'm kind of. I can. We can come up with. We have uh, some people that do it internally. Yeah, it'd be October. But well, for the so September, we could do the community action center. Aid. Okay. Is that what? Is everyone okay with that? <laughs> and some of it may depend on their availability as well. If, Sitting in the chair. Yeah. If Jeff Guy is available. Yeah. You guys can vote me out next meeting. I'm talking someone else has to get voted in. <laughs> I mean, someone else has to dictate. <laughs> All right. I don't think we have anything else, so I just need a motion to adjourn early, I guess. <laughs> I can be a motion to adjourn early. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Never has a quicker motion. <laughs>